Hello, my name is Sam Felton, founder of Smash the Fat, and welcome to another expert interview. Uh, with me today is Kevin McLernan, who is the winner of last year's Biggest Loser in the UK, losing a total of 12 stones, 12 pounds in six months. Is that right, Kev? That's right. That's the last one. And how are you doing, mate? That was, that was actually 24 weeks, not six months. So 24, sorry. Little, little, sorry little, 24 little, weeks to be exact. To be exact. <laughs> not quite six months. Yeah. Um, how are you doing, mate? Great. Everything's, it's, it's, it's all good here. Fantastic. Fantastic. So uh, what I really want to find out is, is how did you go from where you were to um, where you are today? Because it's quite a transition, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, that's quite a big question. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> the biggest loser um, was very much it was just the process. That was the the method, I suppose, of what I did. Mm. For me, uh, and I share this all the time with people. It's what was going on in here, not inside my heart, but like in in, in, in my head. Mm. Uh, you know what was going on there. Uh, I, I had a light bulb moment where I, I took responsibility. It was you know at the end of the day, I was thirty odd stone because of me, it wasn't because of anybody else. I've got no story to tell you where, um, you, you know, something massive, massively impacted my life, which causes to do uh, what I did with regards to food. Mm. Um, I had, like many people, a massively hectic life. Uh, I was running a business which uh, I was unhappy in. I, I was to the point where I actually resented people ringing us up to give us business. That's how, can you imagine that? Someone rings you up to do business with you, Sam, and you're like, oh, that, that, that's what I was like. Um, yeah. so, so, so it was pretty. It was a, it was a pretty negative experience that I was I was living, and, and I suppose my comfort and my uh, I suppose I was using food as, as a form of protection, as a form of comfort. And of course, there was an element of oh, well, I haven't got time to eat, eat breakfast. I'm just going to grab something on the go. And what do you get on the go? You know, you don't just stop off and get something. You know, you don't stop off and get an omelette and some salmon and, and a bit of spinach. You you stop off and. Get a McDonald's and two coffees, yeah. you know, that sort of stuff. So my weight just went on and on and on, and it was always one of them things I would, I would talk to me partner about and say, you know, I'm going to get to the gym tomorrow. I'm going to start my diet tomorrow. I'm going to, um, you know, take action on this tomorrow. I'm going to make more time. And it was always tomorrow. Everything was always on the back burner. And yeah. before yeah. I knew it, I was thirty odd stone. Um, I lost everything. Right. I lost the business. My head was completely. Um, not in the game, and I, and I lost the business, which again was my responsibility. It was down to my mismanagement because I was in this vicious circle somewhere. I had the business, which mm -hmm. was destroying me, sort of my personal life and de destroying how I looked after myself. And at the same time, the way I was looking after myself was destroying the business. So it was like sort of like two two vicious circles going on that were crossing over. And and down and down the, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then boom, like a perfect storm. And, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I lost everything back in uh, 2010. Mm. And it was then that, that I, I made a decision that I had to do something about it. I, I knew I was responsible. I wasn't, like I said before, I haven't got a sub story or a, a back end story, which we could see how I can see where that happened. I knew ultimately it was down to me. Um, mm. So I already had that responsibility. And then what I did was I made a commitment. Uh, I was at an event, a big speaking event, and there was a speaker on there. And he said, what are you going to do the next 90 days to change your life? Which is a, quite a generic sort of phrase. A lot of people use the 90-day thing. And But yeah, yeah. for me, what I did was I was with my partner, and I turned to her and I said, in the next 90 days, I'm going to lose 90 pounds. Um, and I think it was her acceptance yeah. of that, because it was easy yeah. for her. Look, up, I mean, 90 pounds in 90 days is a huge, a huge ask of anybody. But there I was, and all I'd done is put a load of weight on for, for God knows how many years. Um, not yeah, being yeah. in the gym, and they all say I was going to lose 90 pounds in 90 days. But Joanne's acceptance of what I was saying sort of really gave us the, the rock up my arse. like, say, right, I've, I've, got right. This, <laughs> I've got to do something about this. And when I got home, um, I did what people watching this have done, got on the internet, um, mm. and I was, I, was, I was online looking for the solution. And I remembered something that I'd left on the back burner um, going back a year or so. And it was an application form for the Biggest Loser, and I thought, I wonder if they made another one. So I had a quick look, and there it was. And from there, the rest is history. And I knew when I opened my application form, I thought, that's it. That's for me. And let's see the rest is history. Yeah, that's it, mate. That's it. And then uh, what What was the experience like on the Biggest Loser? Because there must be a tremendous amount of pressure on you guys to 
because I mean you're you're trying to stay in the competition week in week out. Yeah. You know? um, and yeah, you're you're in competition from the start. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's TV cameras around and everything like that. It's, it's yeah. quite an intimidating environment. It feels. What was yeah. it like? Well, you're in competition from the minute you open that application form because you know yeah. there's thousands of people apply and there's only 14 people get in. Mm. So you're in competition from then, and then you, you first meet other potential competitors when mm. you go for your first audition. There's a, obviously a holding room before you go in for your uh, thing, and, everyone, and everyone's being nice and friendly. Because, you know, in, for me personally, I was thinking straight away, I could be competing against these people in The Biggest Loser. Well, yeah. actually, no, I wasn't I could be. I was thinking, I wonder which one of these I'd be competing against, because I was convinced I was going to get a place, and I was convinced I was going to win. Uh, uh, <laughs> literally from the start, you know, Sam. That, yeah. That's I, I, I'll quickly tell you what happened. I found the application form. I shouted with Joanne um, on, on this very computer, and then I said, uh, <laughs> "For people the biggest loser," and she came, she came running through. And she, she said, "Excellent." She was looking at the computer and looking at me, and she went, "You're going to win." I went, "No." It just felt, just felt amazing. Like, just felt it. That's brilliant. And then, the, literally from then, the rest just became a process. And it was hard. It was difficult, even filling the application form out. I was getting these little, you know, you get voices in your head. One saying, "You're going to win, brilliant." The next one going, "Phew, you don't want to be doing that. That looks like hard work. You don't have to be away." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's about sort of like going, "Shh," and like listening more to this side. And so anyway, I, you, you're competing from for a place first of all. So you meet these people straight away. But at the same time, once you get the biggest loser house, you, you you want to support people and you want to help people as well, whilst also always keeping your eye on the ball and eye on the prize of, of really why the bottom line is. That's why you're there. Some people get lost on, on that little aspect and, and, and forget that it's a competition and forget that it could be going home next week. And inevitably, they're the people who do go home. Um, Pressure-wise, most of it's self-imposed, or certainly was for me. There's a right. certainly, obviously, the, um, they've got a TV program to make, and, mm -hmm. and that's fantastic. And uh, I, I wouldn't have thought they had any favourites there. Who they wanted to win, it was just a case of they wanted a good winner, they wanted a, a good program, and they wanted to make a program the, the way they wanted to make it. So there was um, self imposed pressure, and there was obviously the alien environment of being in a life where you were constantly being filmed. It wasn't like Big Brother, where there was like hidden cameras or, or cameras and mirrors and cameras. It was if you, you knew you were being filmed, there was you know, a couple of cameramen, mm -hmm. there were big cameras, you knew that you were on camera at all times. Um, mm -hmm. So there's, there's no like sort of like secret filming going on, um, but it, you know there was that added pressure of thinking whatever you're doing could be being seen by millions of people. So you're working hard in the gym, which I think that might be a good thing. You know, for me personally, um, I, every time I trained, it, it might have made us train even harder. But I trained. The, the problem was with um, with that is when the cameras weren't there. There could be a tendency to work a little bit less hard and take your foot off the gas because the cameras aren't watching you. Whereas for me, I just trained full out. Every session was like, you know, this could be my last chance. You just didn't know. All of a sudden, they could say, right, this afternoon we need yours over on this part of the house. Uh, we'll come and get yours. And then we'll go there and there could be like a challenge to do or something to do. That could mean someone's going home. We always had like sort of like this cloud hanging over here of the possibility of being booted off. So yeah, there was a bit of pressure there as well. But it was just, for me, it was just about getting my head down, working hard, and making sure that um, I couldn't be put in that position. I couldn't be put in a position where I hadn't lost enough weight, where people could vote us out. Because I, uh, from the beginning, I think I was viewed as a threat by the other competitors because right. I was because I was quite driven and I was quite focused. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't go around saying I'm going to win. Uh, you know, I played that. I obviously played that right down. But I, I, I might give off <laughs> give off that impression that I wanted to win because. Yeah. Yeah, and when, yeah. when, when, when there was an opportunity to stay the foot off the gas, I still didn't do that. I just kept, mm -hmm. I just kept going. So yeah, massively alien environment, um, but you get used to it, um, and obviously a lot of self-imposed pressure as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And and why do you think it is that you won, bar bar the like amount of weight that you actually lost? It was forty percent of your yeah. body weight, wasn't it? Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, but like, why why is it that you were able to make that transition? Um, it's hard because I can't really speak for the other competitors and yeah. you'll obviously get people who left the competition early on who will say, oh well, if I had stayed, um, if I had gotten the chance to, to do the full eight <laughs> weeks, I would have won, I would have done this. It's all ifs, wise and maybes, you know, and ifs, you know, pot, you know, ifs and ands and pots and pans or whatever the phrase is. Yeah. And, 
the fact is, for me, I didn't leave anything to look. I didn't leave anything to chance. I just worked worked really hard, and I knew that by doing that, I, could, I would stay in week in week out. And obviously, there was a certain element of um, of tactics involved, which I was really surprised at how how soon the tactical stuff came came into play. Um, but at first, I felt a little bit. Oh, hang on, what's going on here? I didn't realize there'd be tactics like this going on. But you know, you've you, you've just got to roll with the punches, and, and when these things happen, you've just got to sort of like say, right, well, okay, I'm not going to let that, that. I'm not going to allow this situation to be out of my control because this is this is my dreams. This is what I this is what I want to achieve, and you just got to take as much control as you can. And I think I'm not saying anybody went wrong anyway. I think people tried the best. I think just for me, I was really for. I think. I was really focused on the end result. I was really focused on that right. that that Davina McCall saying, Kevin, you're the biggest loser. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to take a tape. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I had like, you know, I, I visualized, I had intention. Um, I was grateful for having for that having happened even six months before it happened. I was just focused yeah. on it. And then I think because I was so focused on that, I just automatically took all these actions and everything just became a process. Maybe other people just were thinking week to week to week. And I was thinking twenty four weeks. And then coming back yeah. and sort of like thinking day to day and making sure I did everything that I possibly could. That so, thing. yeah. And then, how, how much freedom do you actually have on the show in terms of sort of your nutrition side of things and the exercise side of things? Um, there's, uh, you know, you, you go to the gym. You, yeah. There's a gym, obviously, at, at the biggest of the house. For anybody who didn't watch the program, it's a big stately home, and there's a gym in the grounds, and you go up mm -hmm. to the gym, which was specially built for the program. Yeah. Um, you have to go unless you're injured or ill. You know, it's not like a case of do you fancy going to the gym this afternoon? It's like right, you, you train at uh, six thirty, ten thirty, two thirty, and six thirty or whatever the times were. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah or and have to leave leave to go and do filming somewhere else for challenges and you want to do winging and stuff like that. So there's yeah. no real choice there. You can't like say, "Oh, fancy an afternoon off." You can no. ask. <laughs> you can Doesn't ask, but, but you're not going to get one. Um, food wise. The, the there was a, a diet a nutrition plan that you would follow which was pretty simple pretty well, well, well you know I, I don't need to tell anybody really it was just um, a bit of carbs a bit of protein um, less carbs in the evening really sort of like simple stuff nothing complex no supplements mm -hmm. no bars or protein shakes or anything like that and then yeah. it was um, so you, you you had a choice you know you, there was food available because we cook for ourselves most of the time. Uh, the, only times okay. got, the only times we got catered for was on weigh-in days and challenge days. Um, mm -hmm. So we cook for ourselves, so you'd have to go to the kitchen after you work out and cook for yourself and make your choices. That's so good. you could, yeah. if you wanted to, for example, um, you could have two lots of porridge, or you could have two chicken breasts, or you could have extra cottage cheese or a load of whatever, rivitas. So, But the it wasn't like a case of opening the fridge and going, shall I pick um, a bottle of water to drink or shall I pick a can of Coke? You know, the, the, mm. that stuff just wasn't there. Shall I have that yeah, frozen? Yeah. Uh, shall I have that frozen pizza? Or shall I have that chicken breast? The choice, as far as that's concerned, wasn't there. But it was certainly like, shall I have chicken, turkey, steak, lamb, whatever? Shall I have rice? Shall I have pasta? Um, I didn't. That's something that after the first couple of weeks, I didn't have any anything that was wheat based. I didn't have any pasta or couscous, which was, which was available. Um, so that might be yeah. one of the reasons why why I did well. That was just a little something that I decided to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, you know, so there was there was choice, but there wasn't mm. a massive choice, if you know what I mean. You, you, no, it's not like uh, you know a standard British kitchen cupboard where like yeah. you know you've got crisps, you got biscuits, yeah. and then you know you got some hummus and some carrots. Yeah, no, it, <laughs> no, no, it wasn't like that. And of course, there was a shopping list which we could write down if there was something that we needed. You know, if we needed some uh, shower gel deodorant, if there was something that we particularly liked to eat. Um, it would obviously have a little joke and write things like on you know Mars bars just for like a little joke and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> obviously obviously they never came, um, which was a bit of a killer actually because there, there was this one time in particular I remember the, the one of the runners had been to Tesco's and she reversed the car up to the doors where that, where our house was and uh, I was helping her unload and she also had in the booth the shopping for the crew it was like cans of beer and you know also you know also there you know ice cream and I was like what. You know, she could at least put a black cloth over it or something. But, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's outrageous, isn't it? Yeah. It was, it was funny. Sometimes we'd, 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 they'd say, "Oh, you need it in the in the library because there's a library there. You need it in the library for an interview." And I'd walk in the door, and 
one of the camera lads would be sitting there drinking the, the kind of pot like in the Mars Bond. Oh, sorry, sorry, put it in. Like, you know, God, it doesn't bother us. I don't care. Do 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 no. do what you want. You know, uh, but I understand some of the people who get quite upset about it. You know, oh, yeah. you you're really doing those. I'm like, okay, but as, I suppose so. Like your your attitude maybe was maybe the best attitude because you know after the program finished, obviously you're going to go back into the real yeah. world. You know yeah. where there are going to be these temptations in front of you, well, and so, you know in that way you sort of muted out those temptations. Yeah, before because that's the thing you do eight weeks in the biggest of the house and then sixteen weeks at home. So mm. in the sixteen weeks at home, obviously at home in, in my house there was nothing in the fridge or the freezer anywhere that I that I would uh, want. But certainly I had my own money. I, I was out in the streets on my own. You know, I drive to the gym myself, and in between the gym and my house. There's any number of places I could go and get something like a Mars bar and a kind of pop if I wanted to do. Yeah. So, so I suppose maybe that in that eight weeks it sort of got got me brain programmed into that's definitely not what you want because not once in the 24 week process did I waver from plan. Not once did I have a blowout. That included that included Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. one th sorry, I tell I one thing I did on Christmas Day. Not not Christmas gone. Christmas before mm -hmm. I had. Um, some roast potatoes, and, and, and that was in a 24-hour yeah, yeah. period. The rest of the time, I was a completely 100% on plan. And I think that, that's another thing that gave me the edge, um, that I was 100% on plan 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. Just, just whoosh, you know, nothing, <clears throat> nothing, nothing else matters. I don't care that there's Mars bars there. I don't care. Uh, I don't know why I keep saying Mars bars. I've, I've never really been a big fan. Uh, I, I, you know, I, don't, I don't care that I can get a pizza or whatever. I just stuck to, even when I wanted to, uh, on a on a weighing day, I would always increase my calories slightly, give myself like a little bit of a boost, um, okay. increase my carbs a little bit. Um, this is at home, and even then, my treat, if you want to call it a treat, I'm not a big fan of using the word treat around food. My treat was a chicken kebab, which was basically grilled chicken and salad, which I'd been eating every day anyway. It just it felt yeah. different to the wrapped in paper. You know, yeah. and, and, that, and, that, and, that, and that's what worked for me, and that's what kept us going. Where some other people might say a treat would be a a 15 inch pizza, which even now the thought of eating a 15 inch pizza makes us a bit more thanks. Quite an undertaking, quite an undertaking. <laughs> um, well, it, it's, a, it's an amazing journey. And then when, when you came into that final weigh in, and then Davina did say, Kevin, you are the UK's biggest loser. What, what did that feel like? What was it like? <sighs> Relieved. Um, <laughs> Because the, the day itself, um, you know, obviously you see an hour's worth of about 45 minutes with the adverts, mm. 45 minutes of TV, but it took like a, a full day, well, it was three days building up to it, like we were, right. like we were away in a hotel, um, mm. and then there was the, the day itself, I'd just been locked in a room by myself, all the, all the finalists, there was three finalists, and each one of them had a separate dressing room, and um, no one was allowed to see us, and we weren't allowed to see anybody else, so it was just like a really tense day. Uh, of, of you know uh, being ready for the program, which was being recorded at about seven o'clock at night, um, and when I went out, um, I, well, sorry, beforehand that came to us and said there's a running order. This is the running order: Amy first, then you, and then Sarah. And I mm -hmm. thought, well, whoever, and, and to be honest with you, Amy was my niece, and I knew I'd beaten her because you know we trained together, and yeah. so it was me, Amy, and Sarah were the final. And when they said Sarah was going out last, I thought, well, she must have won because, you know, you would think it would bring the winner out last and that would be the big hoo-ha. Mm -hmm. um, so I was a bit gutted. And so I wish yeah. I'd, in, in hindsight, I wish I'd known I'd won because I'd have enjoyed it more. I'd be more relaxed. Yeah. But as it happens, I went out. I was really tense. I wasn't bothered about, obviously, <clears> making a TV program. I wasn't bothered. There was about 600 people there in the audience. I wasn't bothered about that at mm -hmm. all. I was more, I was thinking, oh, I haven't won and I've done all this and, 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 yeah. say, well, and, and, and you know, you get people saying, "Oh, you know, I've seen the other contestants giving you a nod and a wink, like you know, uh, people around the place. Oh, you're doing really, you've done really, really well, and, and all that. And uh, this is your night, and have a great night." And, and, I, and I was like, I wanted to win, and I wasn't being a sore loser. Uh, mm -hmm. And then when Sarah came out, I thought oh, she did really well, and I'm hopeless at getting, women, getting, guessing women's weights. I can guess men's because invariably at some point in my life I've been that weight. I can look at someone and go. He looks like I did when I was about 30 stone, so yeah, he's about 30. <laughs> so, so, I, so I had no idea where, 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 where she was, and only when she actually got weighed um, 
and, and I weighed, a final weight came up. I knew what she had to beat to beat me, and I knew she hadn't beaten us. So there was about a minute between me working that out in my head and it coming <laughs> on the screen. And so I knew I'd won, but I had to stand there and think, God, I've won. I, I to, I, I've won. And all that's just going through my head. And then once Dina confirmed it, then I, I was like really happy. You know, I was like, oh, God, yeah. I hard for that. And just really, really pleased. And then I saw right. Joanne in the audience and the people who I trained with at home and my mum and dad. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting emotional actually thinking about it now. And, Absolutely. And, and I was just like, get in. I, I, I'd done it. I'd <laughs> done it. I had, because I'd worked so bloody hard and I'd right. done it. And the whole thing, the plaudits and, the, and, and, and everything that went with the prize and all that, that was all totally secondary to having. Ha- for me, having had this intention of this is what I'm going to do, mm-hmm. and then actually doing it, actually having like this, you know, it was a big intention. It was a grand thing. It wasn't like you know, I think oh, I think I'll make a pot noodle. Well, that's easy. Pour some water in, and <laughs> you've done it. Really? This was a massive big deal. And really, on the outside looking in, anybody who knew us then would have thought, yeah. well, you know, he's, he's saying he's going to win the Biggest Loser. And, you know, he hasn't trained for years, and you know, he's really out of shape, and he's be much older than most of the contestants, which I was. Mm. But for me, it was just like I've done it. I kind of yeah, I, awesome. And then, the, then the rest just went went by as a blur. And yeah, actually, so, 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 so the last eleven months since then, you know, it's, 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 yeah. I bet. And, and that leads me on to uh, on to my next question. So, so what what what's been happening since you won the show? Well, afterwards, um, it was it was a funny thing because after it went quiet for a little while, I did all the, the media stuff, the day yeah, break, and, and then with it papers and all that was good went quiet for a little bit and it's it's just been constantly busy since then i'm, I'm now speaking um right. quite regularly in front of various different audiences not just in the fitness industry or health and fitness world you know in the corporate world as well mm. uh, in the motivational events uh world i speak quite a bit there um, i've got an online program that i start doing with people which is you know getting there uh, I, you know and i i enjoy giving people the information that i had and say this is what i did if you do that <laughs> You you'll also lose a lot of weight. Now, no one, well, I don't know, but the, the the amount of weight that I lost is certainly down to the fact that I was massively restricted calories wise, and I was massively exercising loads, which sort of goes against a little bit what I've what I would do with somebody now in the real world because it's not realistic for most people to, right. to work out that much, uh, to eat that much, uh, yes. you know, in the real world and, and sustain it without the pressure of a, of a TV competition over them. So. What I do is I now I now share with people well you can do this and still get awesome results. Uh, so I've been speaking a lot and, and, and life's good, you know. The, all that stuff's brilliant. You know, I, I, I work with Concept Two, the Raw Machine Company. I, I, I do stuff for them now, and that's brilliant. Mm-hmm. And and all the various different things and opportunities that have come along be great, but the main things are are the personal things, the things that you know I, I've, I've I've got married. Uh, yeah, congratulations, mate. Thanks. In October, um, you know, life's good there, and life's just been. Completely transformed, having lost weight. Forgetting the biggest loser aspect, it's a, it's a sort of like the byproduct almost is that yes. life has become like just great, fantastic, and just living life, doing stuff that I like doing, and, mm-hmm. and feeling great, and, and, and eating well, and, and prospering from that. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. And so, how did you find going in that transition from you know working out four times a day, <clears throat> going into the real world? What was yeah. What was that? It's hard because for me, yeah. and, and I can imagine people who watch think programs like the biggest loser, the, the UK one and the American one, it gives the impression that you've got to work out crazy amounts yeah. to lose weight. And I can see that as a, as a, and I know that's seen as a bit of a negative by a lot of people in the fitness industry. And I can totally get that. Um, I, I totally do. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, before I did Biggest Loser, I'd lost a lot of weight in the past and put it back on. I'd done a program, Bill Phillips Body for Life which was working out six times a week. So I knew I knew you could lose weight and do well just working out five, six times a week. You didn't have to do like three hours in the gym. You could do 45 minutes. And, uh, and I knew all that. Um, but for me, it was quite hard to sort of like get out of the zone of having to train twice a day. Basically, and it's only been quite recently as well, that I've been able to accept, well, I've trained in the morning, like this morning, I did 25 minutes on my row machine. I did a uh, five-minute warm-up, 20 minutes of really hard intervals. And then that was me done for the day. Yeah. Whereas in the past, I would have been like, well, I've done that. What can I do next? What can I do at 1 o'clock? What can I do at 4 o'clock? And if I didn't do that at the end of the day, I'd think I'd had a, had a pretty poor day. And then rest days, I'm like, oh, 
you know, a bit twitchy. And, and it's only recently I've begun to sort of like say, well, actually, if I do three weight sessions, sessions a week and two or three good interval or tobacco cardio sessions a week, mm -hmm. I'm doing well. I'm doing oh, yeah. Probably double what most people are doing, and it'll be really massively effective. So it was quite hard, is, is, is what I'm saying. It sort of like changed my mind of saying it's still a great day if just if you if you haven't done a crazy workout, it's, you're still doing really really well. Because one of the problems that I've and I've still experienced this since Biggest Loser that I had before Biggest Loser and experienced a little bit since is I'm an all or nothing sort of person. So. I had like a bit of a thing of, well, if I'm not working out three times a day or, or twice a day, and if I'm not eating exactly like that, well, I might as well just not work out at all. I might as well just yeah. do that. And I have had a couple of bouts of that, mm -hmm. um, not massively, you know, sure. but, you know, where old habits have crept back in. But the difference now is that I'm aware that when I see them creeping back in, I think, hang on a minute, the last couple of days, I haven't worked out mm -hmm. and I haven't eaten the way I should have done. I've spent too much time working. I haven't been outdoors much and stuff like that. I recognize that, and I, and, I, and I know now to go, no, arrest the situation, no, down tools, get to the gym, or, you know, get out with a dog, or get on the road, or something like that, and that's that's the massive difference for me, it's the it's the knowing and recognizing when things are going, you know, off on the wrong tangent sort of thing. Absolutely, um, yeah. <clears throat> and, what, and yeah, what was the nutrition, like, because as you were saying there, like, the, the, the cupboards in the biggest loser house were you know, stocked full of healthy stuff and it was just a case of, you know, whether you're going to be eating too much, you know, was the only way that you're going to be putting on weight and I'd probably say the pasta. But um, the um, but when you come into the real world, as you were saying before, you can go down to the corner shop and yeah. buy, you know, whatever you want. Yeah. Well, since, since the biggest news, there's obviously, like you say, that pressure's off. And I can just go down to the, you know, I've got a Sainsbury's, I can nearly see it from where I live. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got shops that, in this country, we're lucky we live in a massive abundance um, in, in this society and we can just go and get anything we want, whatever we want, literally mm -hmm. 24 hours a day. Um, and there has been times, like I said before, where I've had a, a battle, my own sort of, um, I hate the word battle your demons, but sort of like, like I, say, like I said before, I talk about like voices, but quieting that voice down and say, you know, that's not what you want to eat. And sometimes it's been, you know, I, I, I'm absolutely honest in this and I tell people this, sometimes it has been quite hard. I have actually absolutely. had to stop myself and have that internal dialogue and have that conversation. Not like, oh, you know, uh, you know, oh, you're bad for eating. Just like, is this what you really want? How is this going to serve you? You know, mm. I also use the um, the pattern interrupt thing, the NLP thing, where I normally have an elastic band up my wrist and I go like that, twang that, and it interrupts me, gives a pattern interrupt and stops us from going and doing anything yeah. that's going to be self destructive. I, I, I use them sort of tactics. So, yeah, there's been, and there has been times, particularly around when I got married, you can mm. imagine, most people um, take that out of the ball uh, with everything bar the, bar the wedding. And so, there was a period of time there where I took me out of the ball, maybe over Christmas, I'll be honest, I'd maybe slightly overindulged because. <laughs> Previous yeah. Christmas, I'd, I'd indulged by having a couple you of roast uh, So, so pretty much like a normal person. But like I said before, I'm constantly aware of that now. Not in a way that I've got a constant battle, but that mm. I'm aware that oh, hang on a minute. Like for example, um, this might sound a bit daft. Yesterday, I was out. I had a meeting out, and I had lunch, and I had a, a jacket potato, which these days I don't eat. Um, mm. A jacket potato with tuna and some onion and some salad. And it was lovely, but today I'm really, really well aware of that. And I'm thinking, well, I can't have, I, I wouldn't have a potato again today, right. for example. Um, yeah. So if I went out for a meal out tonight, which I'm not, but if I was, if I went out to an Italian restaurant over the road there, if I went to an Italian restaurant to, uh, tonight for a meal and had whatever steak and chips or something like that, I then wouldn't have steak and chips tomorrow as well. I wouldn't have a pizza tomorrow. It'd be like, well, actually, I had. For, here's a good example. Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday gone. I was at the cinema. Had popcorn, yep. I had a little ice cream, and it was a bit of a, a night off from 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 it all. And I'm aware of that even now. I'm thinking, well, actually, I had, I had a bit of a ropey day mm. on Tuesday, so I've just got to keep everything right from now on. I think it's about getting like being 80 or 90 percent on plan, 80 percent on plan, and everything else will follow. Obviously, I've still got a little bit to lose. Um, my weight loss has slowed down um, because I am eating more now, uh, but I'm happy with that. Yeah. I'm comfortable with where I am, and. Um, as long as it's going in the right direction is, is, is how I feel now. But it's been quite a hard transition changing from that. Yeah, go, 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 go. You've got to work out four times a day. 
only a thousand calories. Only, and it's, and it, but it's only like I said before, it's been very recent that I've been able to like go. It's all right, you know. It's all right. It's only work out once a day. In fact, yeah, it's a good thing. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Because because you know, it is all right to have a little. It's all right to have a popcorn now and again. You know, the last time I had popcorn before last Tuesday was. Well before Christmas, probably. You know, I kind of, you know, I couldn't say I was when I went to see this film. That film, mm. it was ages ago. So it's not like it, it's not like every week I go and have loads of popcorn. I do this because that's what I would have right. been like in the old days. In the old days, on that Tuesday that I was doing that, that I knew mm. I was going to the cinema, I would have thought, well, I'm going to pictures tonight, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to be having popcorn. I'll have a nice cream. Well, I might as well have a hot dog and some nachos. And if I'm doing that tonight, well, I might as well have a a pile of crap for lunch and a, a yeah. meal before I go out, which is a pile of crap. And then on the Wednesday, I'll wake up with the feeling that I woke up this Wednesday a bit, oof, a bit like something's not quite right. And instead of going, let's have some spinach and eggs for breakfast, I would have probably had some crunching of cornflakes and loads of milk and then other cereals are available, bad ones. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then for lunch, and that would have been like a spiral. That yes. would have been like, well, for lunch, I will have had that crap for lunch. For breakfast, I might as well have crap for lunch and then even meal. I'll start again tomorrow. And then tomorrow, 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 and tomorrow never came until I was 30 at Stone and I was on, on The Biggest Loser. And that's literally, exactly. I, I, I can't pinpoint the day where I say, actually I was doing really well and then there's one day I went to the pictures and had some popcorn and the next thing you know I was 32 Stone. But at some point mm -hmm. in my life, I took my eye off the ball and, and one day turned into two, turned into three, turned into four or five years and my life ended up a bit of a mess for a period of time. Yeah. Um, and and that's sort of my final question really is um, you know people that are in a similar position to where you were at, you know 30 stone um, how, how can they actually th at 30 sorry sorry Sam, at 32 stone at 32 stone two pounds which is 450 pounds for anybody listening in, in, in America if you're listening yeah. in Europe I don't know about kilos um, yeah. about half <laughs> it, it, that I was actually that um, I actually lost weight. And I, I have actually been heavier than that. Not not loads heavier, but a bit heavier than that. A little um, bit. Yeah. But so, anybody that's sort of, you know, around that 30 stone mark, how, yeah. how can they gather the motivation um, to to make that transition without, you know, a TV show or anything like that? Because, I, I mean, I can't even imagine what what somebody in that position is going through. Yeah. But how, how do they make that transition to where you are today? They need to know why, why they want to lose weight. Not why they are where they are. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people spend a lot of time, and I did the same, mm -hmm. wondering, well, why am I like this? Why, why is this happening in my yeah, life? Yeah. It's not necessarily important. It's not necessarily. If there's something really traumatic happening that you need help with, um, I know that is a, a, a big problem with people being um, abused. Uh, they then eat food because it's a form of protection, apparently. And I, don't, I haven't had to deal with anybody like that. And that, that was, certainly wasn't my problem. But some people need to get some sort of psychiatric help. But I think some people just, just they've just took the eye off the ball. And, and there's probably people listening to this now, I, I hope they are, where they, they, they feel like, this isn't me. I felt when I was 32 stone, that just wasn't me. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I was like encased in this fat suit that I'd made for myself. Um, and right. that just wasn't me. And I think what people you know, need to do is to tackle it one step at a time, but at the same time focus on, on what you really want, why you really want it, and keep focus on that. Although it is in the distance, it's going to be coming towards you, or you're going to be moving towards it. But it's about taking some sort of action now. Now, I was in that position where I was like, it just felt unsurmountable, and it felt like it was like a... a like, do you know when you've got like loads of paperwork to do, or you've got like you, you've got to do a, you've got to do a tax return, or you've got yeah. to clear the garden shed out or something like that? Is oh, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow because it just seems like where do I start? And if I if I just do this little bit here, it's gonna well, that's not gonna make much difference. It does because a little bit here, a little bit there adds up to a lot. And you mm -hmm. have this big intention of you know if you're 32 stone, you want to be 15 stone. Well, that's 17 stone you've got to lose. And that 17 stone isn't going to come off like that. It's going to come off a pound at a time. It's going to come off by having one workout at a time. It's going to be coming off by eating right a meal at a time. I suggest people, my biggest things are plan, plan your week so you know what you're eating, when you're working out, and, and when when you're eating, and everything like that. Um, have a mentor or a coach, someone who tells you what to eat and guides you and helps you. Um, that's a definite, absolute essential. And take it one step at a time. Literally, 
have a good breakfast. That's really important. Breakfast is really important. Have a good breakfast, drink plenty of water. Have a good lunch, drink plenty of water. Have a good evening meal, drink plenty of water, get a good night's sleep, and the next day begins. And you just have to do that over and over and over again. And then eventually, before you know it, you're not 32 so anymore. You might be 29, 28. And eventually, it'll just come down and down and down. And you'll get to where you want to be eventually. Because it, is, it does seem like an unsurmountable task, but it's not. I'm proof that it can be done. The way I did it might be a little bit different how other people do it, but I know people who are losing, some of my clients are like losing uh, four or five pounds a week at home just eating properly by not eating by not eating refined carbs, by not eating pasta, by not eating uh, white potatoes, but at the same time they're not feeling hungry. They're giving the, body, giving the body the nutrients that they need, they're drinking plenty of water and they're doing a bit of exercise. And again, nothing mental. And you don't have no. to. It, it might seem like a massive task, it, 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 you know, I'm not going to say to someone, you're 32 stone and you're going to be 15 stone, you know, by by the summer. No, it, it's going to take you a while, but our time's going to pass anyway. The next year is going to, in, in a year's time, we'll be sat there. It'll be the first of March 2014, and that's going to happen anyway, regardless of what you what, what you do, you know, about your weight. Mm-hmm. What, what, it, it, where are you going to be on the first of March 2014? As well as say to someone, it's about taking action today. Get enough from listening to this. Finish listening to this. And go and do something now as well, and then just keep doing it. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, that's perfect. You know, <clears throat> you need to plan and prepare, and then yeah. also, as you say, hire hire a coach or you know, find some form of support group that yeah. is going to help you on your way. Um, yeah. Now, you run a a great website, weightlosschamp.co.uk. Yeah. 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 Um. So people can sort of like find out more information about your your online program and the community yeah. that you're building there. Yeah. We've got a Facebook group, which we've got a free Facebook group that people can come and join. That's that's no problem. You get support there from other people on the same sort of journey. Then we've got mm-hmm. programs that you can do, which teach you the the, the, the right way to eat, the way that I ate when I lost up, um, the the bulk of my weight and the way I eat now, um, mm-hmm. and, and people can come along and, 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 and learn learn all that stuff. Um, and then get support in doing it because I think that's really important. We're talking about getting a mentor or a coach. Um, if that's out of the question financially, um, which I'll come back to that in a second, but if it's out of the question financially, then you need to have some sort of support from like minded people. Yeah, because often, often you find with people who are wanting to lose weight, um, you've probably heard this thing about the crabs in the bucket. The crabs in the bucket, one of the crabs tries to get out, the other crabs pulls it back down. Yeah. And it's the same with people wanting to lose weight. They try to lose weight, and often friends who will mean well, you know, comes at, most of the time it doesn't come from a dark place, it comes from the heart. Oh, you're all right, you don't need to lose weight. Which you can't, you cannot say that as someone who's 32 stone. You can't. That's just no. like, that, that is just absolute total and utter nonsense. You can't even say it to say a woman who's 14 or 15 stone. You do need to lose weight. The fact mm-hmm. is, if you're Sorry. overweight, you, you, need, you need to lose weight. Love people say that because of the, the dorm, <laughs> Sorry? I love your honesty, mate. Yes. That's true. It's amazing. It's true. <laughs> the people know that. And the problem yeah. is that people yeah. people have this thing that they don't want other people to change because it yeah. threatens them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know people personally who've had a situation where they've got overweight friends or relatives who have struggled for a long time to lose weight. And they've actually said to them, oh, you don't need to lose weight. Because what would happen is, all of a sudden, instead of being just a little bit overweight, they suddenly become yeah. the fat person in the group because that person's lost weight. And, the, yeah. and, and, and they're promoted to being the fat jolly person in the group. You, you, you listen to yourself. Don't listen to what other people say about not losing weight. It's it's rubbish. You need to. You, you do if you if you think you need to lose weight, then you do need to lose weight unless you you know you you seven stone and that's just a different department altogether. But what I'm saying is, yeah. listen to yourself and, and take action on that. But. Get a support group of other people who will, will elevate you, and almost like a mastermind of, of mm. other people who've been there, done it, perhaps, or people who are doing it as well. So you can share victories and also share the share the difficult times as well. Like you know, you're not going to transform overnight. Nobody is. You know, these are habits. You people are overweight because of habits, and changing the habit doesn't just go around and change this habit right now. It's it's about repeatedly creating a new habit. And being in the right environment helps you to do that, and and I think that's really really important. But getting back to the coach and mentoring thing, often mm. you'll hear people, oh, I couldn't I couldn't afford a trainer, I couldn't afford a mentor, I can't afford to do that. But really, when I think about it, let's be honest, a takeaway, yeah. a takeaway, fifteen quid easily, 
Yeah, guys, come on. That's a week. <laughs> the people are spending 60 and 70 quid a month on takeaways, and then they're spending maybe 30 quid a month on a another slimming group, which they're doing, which isn't being effective. Um, yeah. You know, before the note, you can find 100 quid from somewhere. If you can find that 100 quid, well, maybe that's a couple of PT sessions a month with a bit of guidance, a bit of support. It's maybe a session with a mentor or a life coach. You, I really believe that all people who do, all the people who did well at the Olympics, mm. all of them, without exception, would say to you, if you say, what's the secret of your success? They'll say, well, you know, I've been determined, I've been focused, I've been focused on this moment. Jess Ennis, focused on that moment since she was about eight-year-old, right? That gold medal moment, she's been focused on that. But I guarantee you, not not far from her being focused, you've driven this, and I've had a really good coach, I've had really good, uh, I've been really well nurtured, I've, I've, had, I've, I've had a really good environment to do this in, and that's what people need to do to lose weight. To get your gold medal moment, you need to get somebody or a group that's going to push you up and push you forward, instead of one that pulls you down back in the bucket. That's it, mate. That's it. Sorry, I um, went on a rant there. No, that's fantastic, <laughs> mate. That's fantastic. And uh, people can head on over to weightlosschamp.co.uk yeah. and um, sign up for your five free videos, can't they? Yeah. Right there, yeah. your five top tips. You need to do that soon because I'm taking them down next week and we're going to be sending something else out instead. Oh, okay, but, cool. But go, get along there as quick as you can. Uh, they're just homemade videos with, with an iPhone or a little camera that would... Uh, a friend of mine and, and me made me let's do these videos and there's just some there's actually there's five videos with ten tips and it's it's, it's worth a look. Just stick your email address and you'll get them. That's it. That's it. Spot on. Spot on. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Kev. Um, okay. And yeah, I very much look look, look forward to uh, to seeing you at Fit Pro. Yeah, I'll uh, see you there. in April. Absolutely, yeah. it'd be fantastic. And yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, in the future, we'll get you back on Smash the Fat Live, and maybe uh, maybe we'll do like a because um, we do weekday wake up workouts. We do workouts in the morning live. Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. we'll do like a a, a, a concept two uh, rowing yeah. challenge in the morning. Like a well, tab to batter. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a roll machine in the back bedroom, so I'll just take the take the webcam in there and oh, you know, on the awesome. Roll. That's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna set this up and we're gonna do a concept to Tabata right. race. Right. Awesome. <laughs> I'm up for that. That sounds ace actually. I'm 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 pumped for that. <laughs> but, uh, thank you so much for anybody else. Uh, if anybody watching uh, has any more questions or anything like that, chuck them in the Facebook comments below. I'll forward them on to Kev. Um, and yeah, of course, you can find out more about Kevin McLernan at weightlosschamp.co.uk. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Kev. Cheers, thanks. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye.